already done on the intakes. That's all done. It's ready for the 45s. Now the 60 and the 30 has been done. There's my 60 and 30. I've done had to totally enlarge and open up. Look at all that meat that had to be cut out of there. Okay, when we come over here, and like I said, even from this view angle, I mean, bam, man, you can just, you, you see what I'm talking about. There is the seat up there. Anyway, we've already went through that. The 60 and the 30s are done. Like I said, this is the work up and down, up and down to get them where, like, okay, right here. Here is a valve that I've got to spot. I come across, pull it out, and there's my line. And what I try to do is get that line almost the same. Now, this one here is just a touch high. So I'm going to back off over here. Uh, how about right here? And I save this one because this is the one right beside of it. Now, what has to happen is that wide part has to get wider. I face the stone. See how I keep her bouncy. It's digging away. Not too much though. All right, I pull it out. And uh, man, I'm going to mark a valve. And basically all I do is I take my Sharpie. Now one thing I'll show you is once you get two or three coatings on it, you have to take the um, uh, carburetor cleaner and get it off because it will cake up a layer on it. I go ahead and do all four of them at a time because this is what you got to keep doing in, in order to adjust it. Now, like I said, yeah, there's going to be some guys, he's doing that with stones. They used that 20 years ago, and, and all that's true. But let me tell you something. I can get deadly precision accurate. It just takes more time. And with a certain machine, there's not much adjusting. Anyway, let's see what we got. Let me see if I got you zoomed in there. All right. Now we're going to pop it again. All right. Now what I'm going to try to do is get some light on this in an angle that you can see. All right. I'm looking through the viewfinder, guys. Now you can see the line, I'm pretty sure, because I can see it through the viewfinder. All right, let me see. I'm going to try to use this now. See the lines. It's about 10 to 15 thousandths past the bottom. Now, because this is driving on the street, I bring it up a little higher. It's probably about 15, between 15 and 20. Now, if it was a full-out race, I'd bring it on to the edge, but I want a little extra meat on the street because he is running the horns. There's going to have a little more exhaust gas temperature. So this is the line. If you move it up, you're using the 60. If you move it down, you're using the 30. I moved it back toward the edge, and this is as far as I'm going to do it, but almost every one of the valves are pretty close to that. So at this point here, we're going to back up. I left this one totally undone for the purpose of the video for right now. It's going to be a little more work, but it's going to be worth it to show you this. Especially you, Mr. Imhoff. I know you're kind of into this and wanting to know what's going on. So anyway, I go in there. I've already got the 45s painted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this chamber with that little spot right there and right there. So that way I don't go in there and touch anything on that one. All right, so I'm going to let her dry off a minute, and we're going to come in here with the 45 and start kissing them. All right. All right. Now, I actually put two springs. I got a custom deal. I made me a little bitty one that come across because on the 45, I definitely want, want a lot of bouncy. So let's pull over here, and let's try to zoom in. All right, now all I'm doing... With the first punch, I do a light tap. Now, I can't tell you how important this is. This is your finesse. You got to try to keep it straight. That's why I change pilots. This is your pilot. And I change them about every two years. But these stone holders are very expensive. And, and at least once a year, I buy all new ones. Because if you don't, it gets a waller and you want it tight. See, these right here, I probably... Um, in the next few months, I'm going to go ahead and buy the next round. I hate that, but you're only as precise as your equipment will let you be. Now, 
I'm gonna go in here. Let's see. All right, now you seen how I did it. All I got was a tap. Now let's look at this. Look how consistent round the same thickness here, here, and here. It is really close. I'd probably say it's about uh, 30 thousandths. Now I'm going to go in here and get the final tap. But before I do that, this is really why I go through stones like I do. Because when it comes to the 45s, I sharpen them a bunch. And there's a trick to this. Um, Excuse me. Ha <laughs> ha, wrong one. Well, you guys are sharp. Telling me I stabbed the wrong hole on that other one was the purpose uh, on the guide when I was turning them around, wanted to show you. But thank you, readers. Keep me on my toes. All right, now, I'm going to go in here and the first cut. Now, watch. Now, I'm going to go real slow on this stone. I did a couple of quick ones. I watched it. Alright. I went real slow on there. I've got a nice good even finish. Let's go back to our um, deal. Okay. Now all I'm going to do, like I said, is a light little tap touch. There's my seat. Now I'm gonna check it and see what kind of measurement I got. I can remember that as soon as it fires off and it hits, it's gonna flatten it probably four or five thousandths. It's gonna grow a little. But let's see what we got just for S and G's. Okay, let me see. I go and hit two other angles. Forty-four thousandths or thereabout. I try to set them at fifty. I know it's going to grow five. That's my seat right there. Now watch this. If you get the seat and if you get this cut the right way, all right, let me back up a little bit. This is what you're going to get. I call it the bounce. See that? Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. You get that thing concentric 100% and get her all the way around, that's what you're going to get. It's a test. Look at there. Ain't that beautiful? Pow! All right, we know that one's there. Now, I've already done the intakes, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hit all these. Then i got to go back in there and put blue dock on it again. Why do you say? Because now I got to lap them and I'm going to see how good of a gray line it is. And then we're going to break out the seat runout tool and we're going to verify the gray with the runout dial. Make sure I've got a thousandths or under on Mr. Imhoff's cylinder head. All right. Let's take a closer look. That just beautiful right there. That is drop dead gorgeous. Just a perfect line. Now, here's the part I wanted to show you. Look below that. How much me? All that crap has to be cut out, rolled, and taken away. None of this was done, but yet he said he full ported the cylinder head. What almost all of them do, you've heard me say it a thousand times, all they do, guys, take the casting lands out, polish it. Nobody wants to go in there and do the work anymore. You can see that. Mr. Imhoff's got the proof. I think he's going to post some comments about this, what he paid for the job and what they did. Well, he's got a damn legitimate gripe on this one because he sit here and watched what all I had to correct. All right, I'm going to go ahead, touch the seats, come back, put the blue dock on there, and then we're going to lap them in and, and finish this valve job out. 